Good morning. Here we are in uh, Bukit Gambir, Northern Johor, Malaysia, about three hours drive from Singapore. I just checked out. This is the Remember Hotel. I was staying here last night. Let's just say it was a place I will never forget, right? Not a bad place to stay actually. But anyway, today is another track day. Only this time it's a little bit different. We're not using the Yamaha R6 this time. Instead, we'll be using this guy. My Hasvana FS450. Today, I'm looking forward to having uh, quite a bit of fun. Um, so the track uh, that I'll be going to is about 20 minutes from here. It's called Tangka. And uh, the layout of it is quite interesting because it's a bit like a superbike track in the sense that you've got very nice flowing high-speed corners and a bunch of long straights. Long straights in inverted commas, I say that because um, in actual fact, it's a very miniaturized version of a sport bike circuit. That's so it's slightly different from a typical kind of supermoto circuit where you get like very short and sharp corners. So on this one, it's a bit more flowing. So it's quite enjoyable, especially for someone who's used to sport bikes. So yeah, basically the plan today is just to go there and have some fun. Um, maybe practice my corner entry a little bit, but mainly to have fun really. And uh, I thought I'd make it a little bit interesting by doing a bit of a review as well. To explain that to you, uh, I'll probably have to move somewhere quieter and then I'll show you the bike. The FS450 is actually quite a special bike in the sense that it's actually a race bike that is um, built as a race bike from the factory. So you don't get that very frequently. Most of the supermoto race bikes are prepped motocross bikes, not this guy. This one is straight from the factory, pretty much the way you, you're looking at it now. Um, except for a few small things that I've done to the bike, which maybe I'll talk about another day. But uh, there's just one thing that I want to focus on today, and that is the suspension, specifically the front forks. So one thing very unique about this bike is that the front forks, instead of a typical coil metallic spring, uses an air spring system. Um, and how it works is rather quite interesting. Um, quite ingenious actually in its simplicity. Where I'm sure that you're pretty much familiar with how we have a typical spring that sits inside the fork body itself. And I'll put some footage up just to show you a cutout of that just in case you haven't seen it before. But basically in lieu of that, for the air spring system, what you have instead is a complete closed cartridge system and then within it you have like a piston that seals off the upper chamber from the lower chamber. And inside the upper chamber, they call it I think the positive pressure chamber, you are able to control the air pressure and it basically balances out between that chamber here and the pressure in the negative chamber. So it's basically just a tube with a piston in it. Very interesting and one of the main advantages of such a system um, on paper at least, um, is the fact that it's actually much lighter and I had the opportunity to actually hold both cartridges in place, a, a spring system and an air spring on this fork itself and there is about a one kilo difference. And so it is significantly lighter and in addition to that, it also allows you to on the fly change the spring rates basically um, simply by pumping uh, specific amounts of air into the fork. So if I wanted to say run a reduced spring rate or a higher spring rate with a typical coil spring system you will be opening up the fork and removing the spring and changing out a new one and stuff like that which is quite an involved process but with the air spring it's different. With the air spring you just pump how much air you want into the fork and that will give you the spring rate that you desire. So it's very very adjustable in that respect. Where the criticism comes however is in its performance. So I won't consider myself the kind of guy who can make uh, an absolute judgement about the performance of a system like this but many guys that I've spoken to um, who are much faster than me have told me that it is kind of a weak spot on this bike to run with an air spring. What am I supposed to be comparing it to? And the answer to that, as you can probably tell from the title, is the Andriani Spring Conversion Cartridge System. So just a quick word about aftermarket um, suspension options for the FS450 as well. Um, the stock fork system works um, in this way. We have the damping, which is the rebound and compression damping on the right side of, of the fork. And on the left, we have the spring system. When you decide to go with a spring system, you can either go with the one from Andriani, which is just basically replacing the left side of the fork, thus only taking over the spring, what used to be the air spring, and swapping it out for a coil spring, and leaving the traditional rebound and compression damping stock on the right side of the fork or you can also go with an Olin's aftermarket cartridge system which 
slots into the stock fork bodies but now you are replacing not only the air spring system but the rebound and the compression damping system as well or with the third option you can go with a full Olin's fork which is big big money uh, which will probably give you the best performance but it'll cost you quite a large sum the reason why I went with the Andriani is because it seems to be the best bang for the buck option most of the criticism leveled at this bike has been at the spring system and not so much the uh, compression and the rebound so damping wise I'm pretty happy to leave it stock and uh, just swap out the spring and just see how it copes uh, now that the coil spring is in place so I no longer have uh, I'll just show it to you now I no longer have the air spring system installed on this fork what you're looking at now is the Andriani coil spring system so I have not used it this is the first time this is the first time I'm using it and uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out on this track so with any luck it'll be a nice day and it does look it does look like a pretty nice day today nice and clear there might be some rain forecast for later but we'll see about that but basically I'm hoping to get some good riding time in to compare the two systems and see which one I prefer and how they differ from each other so that's what I'm planning to do today um, and yeah so stick around I'll take the bike for a ride and go have some fun I'll put up some footage in the next couple of minutes and then at the end of the track day my plan is to let you guys know what I thought of this uh, spring system and uh, if it's any good so stay tuned for that hi guys it's me again coming via voiceover unfortunately I had a bit of an equipment malfunction my GoPro basically flew off the the bike on the first outlet so I lost my primary camera the battery flew out as well. I lost that battery. I never recovered it. The camera is fine. The cage that the, the, the camera was in was pretty smashed up. Basically, I was down to my secondary camera uh, for the rest of the day. So I, I do have a somewhat limited selection of clips for this track day. So I thought I'd just play what little I have and tell you guys my impressions of the um, Andriani spring cartridge kit that I had installed. Let's begin with the pre-riding stuff. Um, as far as practicality goes, I do prefer the coiled spring over the air spring mainly because um, the air spring does require you to pump up the air pressures and check them before going out for your ride every time um, you go for a track day or a race. And uh, even when you go out, some of the more professional um, riders over here, they will go out, they'll get the fork moving a little bit, put a bit of heat into it, come back and then kind of set the pressures again. So there is a bit of a hassle involved um, when dealing with air forks in this way. I guess that's just the price you pay for having an adjustable um, spring rate system in your fork. Uh, some people are okay with it. I think in this application, it might be a little bit too much trouble for what you get. Because like I said earlier, in this part of the world, Supermoto is mostly tarmac. So... I'm not quite seeing the benefit of having adjustable spring rates in this particular application. Okay, so that's the practicality part as well. Um, just bear in mind that um, as far as my opinions go, I'm basically a novice rider. I have spoken to many intermediate and advanced and expert riders as well um, who have had similar modifications done to their bike. So I would say that generally speaking, my opinions echo theirs. So even if you do ride at a higher level, chances are you will probably feel the same way that I do as long as um, you're riding in the same kind of environment um, as I am. So with that, uh, I asked myself a series of questions when I went out um, with the suspension setting, with the new suspension, I should say. Um, and the first question I asked myself initially was, if someone came in there and swapped my forks out, without telling me anything, and I just rode the bike, would I realize something had changed? The answer is definitely yes. So that first condition has definitely been met. There is definitely a difference. The next question is, is this difference something that I view as positive? Okay, the short answer to that question is definitely yes. I'm, I'm just going to say it outright. This thing is a revelation as far as differences go. It's just amazing. I, I went in there, I was just riding, having fun. My aim here is to, to, to train myself for um, the superbike racing that I'll be doing this year. I wasn't aiming for a lap time. I was just pushing as hard as I felt like, just doing whatever I want, especially on the corner entry because braking is where I really need to improve myself. And I, I literally just cut like two seconds off my lap time on a circuit where a typical lap is like 45 seconds. That's a lot. That's huge, in fact. Now, I'm not going to say that 
the entire two seconds savings came about because of the front suspension, because that's not true. I'm a far better rider now than I was when I last came to this track, which was quite some time ago. It was like almost two years ago, I think. Mm. It has been a while and I have improved. Um, probably the lion's share of my improvement is because of this, but there is definitely a cause to be made for how good this coil spring system is and the confidence that it gave me um, riding on the track that day. So as the problem I have is trying to convey what I actually felt. It's kind of a hard thing to do on a video. But the main difference that comes about from the spring system compared to the air fork is how it feels when it's pushed really, really hard. Like initially, like if you were, had the bike just stationary and you're kind of pumping the forks up and down with minimal force and just using a little bit of travel. And if you went back and forth between the air fork and the spring, you, you, you wouldn't feel much of a difference. It, it will kind of feel the same. There is a bit of a difference, but it's not like something you'd be thinking like, oh man, this is so going to improve my riding. You're not going to think that. But when you're actually out riding the bike and trail breaking the crap out of your bike, which is something I love to do with this new spring system now, there is a very big difference in behavior. And like, you can just, it just doesn't protest. Like you don't get any kind of chatter or... um vibration or like pushing or the kind of thing from the suspension it just does it like with the air spring it will behave very nicely and then it will come to a certain point where it will start to do strange things that for a novice rider like me um feels a little bit weird like juddering and pushing and and chattering and stuff like that and i just uh, a guy like me doesn't know how to react when stuff like this happens so we tend to back off, we tend to lose confidence and then we don't break as hard as we usually do. That's natural. With this guy, it's just nothing. It just works. It's like you're pulling on it. I literally was pulling on the brake as hard as I could. Like, I pulled on the lever so hard I was starting to get arm pumped. That's how hard I was pulling in some cases, just to try it out. And I was going as deep into the corner as I as I did and I realized that the bottleneck is, it's not the tire and it's definitely not the suspension anymore it's me and that's really what you're looking for in a suspension upgrade like this you want the limit of the suspension to be so high so above your ability that you're no longer worried that you might inadvertently exceed it and get yourself into a very undesirable situation and that's what it does i didn't have that same feeling with the air fork now here's my qualification do i truly believe that the air fork is a better performer than the spring. And I truly don't think that to be the case. I don't. I think that if you were a high level enough rider, professional enough, like if you were basically good enough, it wouldn't matter. You will basically ride through the strange feelings you get on the air fork and it would perform just as well, except it, you save a little bit of weight and you have the ability to change your spring rates quite easily. I think that when you talk about the highest level of riding, they are functionally equivalent. The only difference is how they feel. Where the benefit comes is to lesser riders, riders like myself, maybe you, who value confidence-inspiring behavior from their suspension. And if you fall into that description, if that's you, I strongly recommend you consider buying this spring kit for your FS450 or for your super motorbike, regardless of who makes it. That's about the best um, endorsement I can give to this system. Um, I'm still nowhere close to reaching the limits of it and I do look forward to uh, exploring this limit in the future. And I also have this warm comfort of knowing that, you know, I can improve myself and push myself a little bit harder and yet not need to worry about the limits of the suspension on my bike. I like that feeling. It's something that I did not get from the air fork system I had before. So if this sounds like something that you might like, or if you can kind of relate to what I'm saying, I say just go for it. It's a great, great mod. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little review. If you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask or any feedback or any kind of other things you might want to know, feel free to ask. I'll be posting more videos as I do other track days or races. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.